So many of us think of kink as being abnormal or unusual. You know, a lot of us never end up exploring it. And because of that, like you could be missing out on something or many things that you actually really enjoy. Hello and welcome to the Pillow Talks podcast. We're your hosts, Vanessa and Xander Marin. I'm a sex therapist with over 20 years of experience. And I'm just a regular dude. We share the ups and downs in our relationship while giving you step-by-step techniques for improving yours. Make sure you subscribe for your weekly double date full of totally doable sex tips, practical relationship advice, hilarious and honest stories of what really goes on behind closed bedroom doors, and so much more. It's the sex education you wish you'd had. Today we're coming at you with a unique setup. We are both in head-to-toe leather. Xander's got his puppy mask on, his little cock and ball torture cage on. Oh. I'm uh, flogging him under the table. Whoops. Whoops. (laughs) And um, what else? (laughs) We're in our sex dungeon. We're in our sex dungeon. How could I forget? Yeah, this house that we're renting (laughs) while we find a place to buy, fortunately came with a sex dungeon. So uh, that was great. (laughs) And what else? I I think that sets the scene. And before we go any further, we just want to say an extra special thank you to Green Chef for sponsoring the podcast. And they have a really great deal for you if you want to try them out. They're the number one meal kit for eating well. You can go to greenchef.com slash pillow 130 and use code Pillow 130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. Today we are talking about kinky sex. And no, we are not in full head to toe leather outfits. I think you'd be able to hear them squeaking if we were. Yeah, you might be able to. I or mean, if I'm I was sure vinyl. We, we, we could always edit that sound in to make it sound oh. more realistic. Mm-hmm. Um, however, we definitely don't have a sex dungeon. I don't think a sex dungeon would be particularly well suited for podcast recording. No, it probably would. Well, it like- depends. I feel like a sex dungeon, maybe you'd have like concrete walls or something, which is not <laughs> what you want for a recording studio unless, you know, unless it was like padded walls <laughs> or something. So when your average person hears the word kink, I think these are the kinds of scenes that their minds leap to, right? Oh, yeah. We jump to that extreme. Yeah. And just to be clear, that extreme is hot and wonderful and brings a lot of people pleasure. And that's great. This is a shame-free zone over here. Here, but that is not the only way to have kinky sex. So let's first answer the question, like, what is kink? And yeah. the interesting thing is, like, there's not actually a great definition for kink. So we start with Webster's Dictionary defines, <laughs> defines kink, kink as, I mean, I'm actually, <laughs> right now, I'm really curious what Webster's Dictionary <laughs> does say about kink. Well, I don't have a copy of it, but I do know, I did look at the Wikipedia page because I was curious about it. Oh, great. They described kink as unconventional practices. Hmm. But that made me think, you know, like who gets to decide what's conventional and what's not? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a pretty horrible (laughs) definition because unconventional is a subjective Mm -hmm. uh, to measure a subjective term. Yeah. So it, it can be hard to define like what exactly is kink. It can be sort of like rough sex, but that definitely doesn't encapsulate all of it. It can include BDSM, but there are lots of kinks that don't include BDSM. Yeah, this whole like unconventional practices or untypical behaviors. Like well, that's I mean, that not describes, a useful definition. That describes you and me in the business that we run. You know, oh, the, it's a kinky business. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that we are, we practice a lot of unconventional practices when it comes to <laughs> the type of business that we have, the way that we operate our business. Mm-hmm. You know, our lifestyle completely outside of sex mm-hmm. is fairly unconventional. So I guess we're just, uh, we're we're living that kinky life, whether we Ooh. have kinky sex or not. That's another merch idea. Who doesn't want a sweatshirt? This is living that kinky life. <laughs> mm. Sign me up if I want one now. I think the other thing that kink gets defined as is not vanilla. We kind of do it in contrast. Of like kink is the opposite of vanilla. It's sort of like saying like, well, that's just not white. Like, yeah. okay, but what color is it then? <laughs> yeah, I, unfortunately, all these definitions are not real definitions. They're just not something, not conventional, mm-hmm. <laughs> not vanilla. 
Great. So then it's like, okay, well then let's define the other thing. And we can't really properly define that either. Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> Is that the end of the podcast? I'm sorry, no definition. Cool. See you next week. <laughs> yeah. Another great episode. An absolutely killer one. Yeah. I really hope this isn't your first time listening. <laughs> <laughs> I really do want to go back through and see how many episodes have we included that line and probably pretty high. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about what kink really means, why you should consider incorporating some kinky elements into the bedroom, how to explore kink, and some common mistakes to avoid. But first, per usual, we are doing the review of the week. This week, it is a complete surprise because our team has figured out how to hide the review from me mm -hmm. until I read it. So I'm going to click on it right now. I'm, Here we go. Should I be worried? We'll see. <laughs> All right. Do yourself a favor and listen now. I recently discovered this podcast when someone recommended it in a comment section on another Instagram account that I follow. Oh my gosh, Hell yeah. yay, thank I you. love that. <laughs> Absolutely recommend our podcast all over Instagram. That helps us so much. Being the creepy little stalker that I am. Oh, ooh, ooh, kinky. <laughs> That's the perfect review for this. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Okay. I decided to check it out on a whim, and I am so glad I did. Vanessa and Xander are incredible. Just when I think I have a question about something that I think no one else has, they come out with a podcast about it and not only normalize <laughs> it, but they do so while seamlessly integrating real stories, humor, vulnerability, and empirical evidence. Shout out to Xander because I work in org behavior as well. Smiley <laughs> sunglasses. Not only has this podcast significantly helped my boyfriend and my sex life and intimacy, he can attest to that too, and he loves listening with me, but I struggle with chronic depression, and although I go to my own therapy already, hearing their raw stories and how they work through difficult emotions has mm. honestly been so helpful and therapeutic in and of itself. I frequently find myself laughing out loud and crying in the same episode. <laughs> they are true gems. And because I know Xander loves emojis, here is my oh, boyfriend Lord. and my reaction <laughs> to listening to this podcast. Okay, this is officially the best review <laughs> we have ever gotten. Um, this emoji game is strong. Yeah, this, this is the strongest emoji game I have ever seen. We're going to have to put a screenshot of this, I think, I on, think so. on, on the show notes. So there's no way I can verbally do this justice. You're going to have to look for yourself. So you're going to have to go to the show notes and click the link to like our podcast page. You're going to be glad that you did. To me, this, this appears to be a cool dude with a big dick <laughs> point, <laughs> pointing at, at his partner who is uh, googly love eyes and saying thank you with their hands together. <laughs> They've used and maybe, like slashes and dashes to create full bodies. It's yeah. very impressive. Oh, yeah. I mean, including a belly button. Oh, Do you see the that? belly button? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, the, the guy has a belly button. Um, and that's a big old dick. The, wow. The person on the right <laughs> maybe has boobs, maybe no arms. It's hard to tell. I think it's like the shoulders coming in. Today. Oh, yeah. Sorry, because, yeah, the hands are, you know, are like praying or like doing the thank you mm -hmm. in the middle. I love it. This it's, is it's truly spectacular. It is a thank sight you, to behold. Thank you so much. We cannot tell you how much we appreciate your reviews. And we do our weekly giveaway every week. So once you write a review in Apple Podcasts, we will enter you every week going forward and we pick a winner. And if you are the winner, if you are the artiste of this incredible emoji art, then you get to DM us on Instagram at Vanessa Marin Therapy. Send us a question and we will give you a personalized mini code coaching session as our small way of saying thank you for writing the reviews. They do make all the difference in the world and they just really make us smile. Oh yeah. And I mean, the, the winner of this really just deserves everything that is coming to them because this is just a uh, chef's kiss. All right. So let's get into it. We turned to Instagram and we just wanted to know, do people think that their sex life is kinky or not? So we asked, do you think your sex life, would you describe it as kinky, as not kinky, or you're not sure? 12% <laughs> said that their sex life is kinky. Only 12%. Pretty low there. 79% said not kinky. And 9% said they weren't sure. And you can't really blame them because those definitions we just read were uh, pretty yeah. unclear, pretty subjective. So it'd be easy mm -hmm. to be like, well, I don't know what this means. So I don't know if I'm there or not. 
Yeah, and we also wanted to know, like, were people curious about exploring more kink? Should we even have made this episode in the first place? Fortunately, 53% of people said they were curious about having kinkier sex. And 29% said that they weren't sure, kind of like maybe curious about it, a little hesitant perhaps to say that they were interested. A tiny bit kink curious. (laughs) And only 18% said that they were not curious at all. So the vast majority of people are at least a little bit curious. So yeah, so most of us aren't really having much kink in our sex lives, but we're either moderately to legitimately curious about doing it. Mm -hmm. So uh I'm excited for this podcast. Let's help you out, figure (laughs) out what kind of kink you want in your sex life and how to do it. So we also asked people what comes up when they hear the word kinky, because there was obviously a lot of people who were kind of in that, like, maybe I'm not sure what's going on zone. And like you were saying a second ago, like, of course, that makes sense if we don't have this clear definition of like, what is kink? Yeah. And I mean, I'd also suspect that there are people out there with there may be some blockages, like a lot of people obviously are interested in trying this, but they're not currently doing it. So like, what's going on? Something must be going on that is stopping people or making them hesitant, at least. Yeah. So we put this question up and we just said, like, what do you think of when you hear the word kinky? BDSM was by far the most popular answer. Most people reference Fifty Shades of Grey, which, you know, we know we've heard that a million times before. Hey, what does BDSM stand for? For anyone who's not sure, including myself that is blanking on some of the word. Wait, wait. You can do it. Well, okay. I, I know the B and the SM are, but the D, okay, what's bondage, the B? Uh-huh. something, and sadomasochism. Yeah, domination. Dominate. Okay, because I was like, <laughs> I was like bondage, like there's bondage. Like, <laughs> like there's a D, but like BD for bondage doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, bondage, domination, sadomasochism. That's BDSM. So you saw it portrayed very badly in Fifty Shades of Grey. That is not actually, if you talk to any like true kinkster, anybody who has really has a lot of BDSM in their sex life, they will tell you, please do not replicate what you saw and read in Fifty Shades of Grey. I also imagine just with that word that you could like, as that word goes on, like bondage, domination, and sadomasochism, you might get a little like, whoa, like sadomasochism. That sounds a little Mm -hmm. intense. So Mm -hmm. like, but to be really clear, like if you are into just like kink or BDSM, like it doesn't mean you do every single one of these things. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So the other words that came up for people were taboo, no rules out there, weird, experimental, and painful. So I think a lot of us have a pretty, you know, extreme and honestly very inaccurate idea of what kink can be. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, why would we want to explore kink? And especially if we have this idea in our heads, of like this very extreme kind of thing. We actually want to turn this around on you a little bit and ask, why not explore kink? I think the really cool thing about sex is that there are an endless number of things that you can explore. Mm -hmm. But, you know, since we think of, you know, so many of us think of kink as being abnormal or unusual, you know, a lot of us never end up exploring it. And because of that, like, you could be missing out on something or many things that you actually really enjoy. Oh, yeah. I mean, we we even hear this just about sex positions. Like, the Mm -hmm. sex position playbook that we sell. So we get feedback from so many people. They're like, oh, I never knew that that these three things were an option mm-hmm. and I started doing it and just this slight modification of a position brings me so much more pleasure. So yeah. just imagine if beyond sex positions, there's actually all these other options on the menu that you may not even be aware of. And mm-hmm. imagine if just one of those things brings you like 20% more pleasure like that, that could be significant. Yeah, why not? I mean, you know, so our perspective is that like, Anything that you can think of, there is somebody who's turned on by it. And we think that that's really cool. You know, there's just so much diversity, so much uniqueness when it comes to sexual expression and pleasure. And like, why shouldn't we all kind of explore a little bit more? Of course, in a way that feels safe and contained. And we'll talk about how to do that. But like, why not explore? And I think the other thing about kink in particular is that 
there are so many different levels of kink. So yes, there are very extreme, intense forms of kink, and there are people who are into that, and they love it, and it's great, and it brings them pleasure and satisfaction, we love that for them, but that doesn't need to be the only way that we experience kink. There are tons of different levels, and actually there are a lot of very, very tame ways to explore and experiment with kink. Also... For the people that do engage in those more, as you were saying, intense or extreme levels of kink, I can almost guarantee you that they did not go from like zero to 60 immediately. Exactly. Like they mm-hmm. started by dipping their toes in the water and being like, oh, this is cool. Like, let me try a little more here. Mm-hmm. Let me try a little bit more of that. Like, so it's funny how we are so quick to engage in this black and white thinking about something of like, oh my God, if I'm going to do this, it has to be exactly like Fifty Shades of Grey, where unfortunately, I think in Fifty Shades of Grey, I never read it or watched it, (laughs) where I think unfortunately, she kind of gets like pushed into the deep end pretty quick, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, the reality is the vast majority of people that are quote in the deep end Mm -hmm. did it very slowly. Yeah, yeah. And we'll talk about this in just a second, some of the mistakes that people make when it comes to kink. But I think that a lot of people have this idea of people who are really into kinky sex as being completely ruleless and boundaryless and anything goes. And the reality is that people who are deep in the kink community have some of the best sexual Mm -hmm. communication, understanding of their boundaries, of safety, of, you know, rules. Like, they really epitomize what it means to like have a healthy relationship with sex. So it's not this like free for all, sexual anarchy, anything goes kind of thing. Oh yeah, I mean, we we do the exact same thing when it comes to like open relationships or polyamory Mm -hmm. is we're like, oh my God, they just do whatever they want. (laughs) And it's like, (laughs) no, like the people that actually practice this effectively communicate better, have clearer relationship boundaries, better everything in order to succeed at that. You need so many things in place. And so it is as much as we think something is a free for all, <laughs> that, that should be a sign to us that it's probably actually not a free for all. Yeah. In fact, the very opposite. So with all of that being said, again, it kind of brings us back to the question of like, why not experiment with kink? If you can do it in these small measured ways that feel safe, they don't feel like they're pushing you too far outside of your comfort zone. You don't have to commit to it. It's not like you're in or out. Are you part of the kink lifestyle or not? Like the worst that can happen is that you discover that you're not really that into something if you do it in the right way. So Let's talk a little bit more about that and get into like some of the mistakes that people yeah, what's, make what's, around kink. What yeah, is the right way? Yeah, let's let's do this podcast just like the definitions of kink where it's like, oh, it's not this. Let's tell you what not to do before we tell you what to do. So the very first mistake and one of the biggest mistakes I think that people make when it comes to kink is this idea that by needing to explore something beyond just vanilla sex or just beyond regular sex, it must mean that something is wrong with your sex life. So like either you have to acknowledge to yourself like, oh, I'm not happy with the way things are. Or like you have to tell your partner like, I'm not happy with what you're doing. I'm not happy with where our relationship is at. Mm -hmm. And so that it's sort of like a lesser than. Like what you're doing currently is not good enough. So we got to do this extra thing that's out of the ordinary. But the reality is that is just not true. Like Vanessa was saying, you know, kink is about identifying things that, you know, may not be done by the majority of people, but might bring you some extra pleasure. Here's another way to think about it. Just because you need to go on vacation doesn't mean that there's something wrong with where you live. You're not going to be like, I went on vacation this year and had a lot of fun. And therefore, that must mean that I should not be living where I am. Mm -hmm. And I have to immediately move to where I went on vacation that like, or to even like take it back a step further, even that like being curious about going on vacation, Oh God, heaven forbid! you know, you shouldn't live where you live. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so another big mistake that people make is pushing themselves to do it. So even though we are making this whole episode, we are encouraging you to like get a little bit curious and explore. If you feel really solid within yourself of like, I'm just not interested. Like this doesn't feel interesting to me. I don't feel the desire to like, that's fine. Not everybody has to explore. So please don't pressure yourselves to do something. Certainly not on our behalf. (laughs) Oh yeah. I mean, to bring the vacation (laughs) example back, I think there's, there are a lot of people that travel a lot because they love travel and they're 
people that feel more comfortable staying where they are. They are really happy mm -hmm. with where they live. And so I'm not going to tell you, oh, yeah. you got to go on vacation. You have to travel. You, you have, have to leave yeah. the country. Like you do what feels right for you. It's just like this. I'm so proud of you for coming up with a comparison that's not food related. Oh, well, we could bring up, we could find a food comparison <laughs> real quick if we wanted to. You know, we might just have to later to keep the good times, the food comparisons rolling. <laughs> okay. So another mistake is thinking that kinkier is better that there's something more like sophisticated or free or sexually uninhibited about having kinky sex. And often kinky sex gets compared to vanilla sex, but we just want to say like both flavors are delicious. Like there's nothing wrong with vanilla sex. Vanilla is delicious and wonderful in and of itself. So kinkier is not inherently better in and of itself. We're not going to put any value hierarchy to any sort of sexual behaviors. Oh, yeah. I mean, hey, let's just keep hammering the vacation um, metaphor or example. Like this. Oh, I think it breaks down there. Oh, no. Well, oh, <laughs> see, Vanessa, Vanessa disagrees. But maybe, you know, when it comes to vacation, it's not like the further mileage wise that you go on vacation, the better of a vacation oh, okay. it is. Like you could go 7,000 miles Around the I world. thought you were going to say like a certain like Fiji isn't inherently better than I don't want to name a, a place, oh. but I think there, <laughs> I think oh. there are some locations that might be inherently better than others. But like, okay, so if you go like seven thousand miles versus five hundred miles, just because you're going somewhere that's seven thousand miles doesn't mean yes. it's going to be better. Doesn't mean you're going to have a better time. Okay, sure. Like, or you could sure. also you go seven thousand miles and go to a great place. You go seven thousand miles in another direction, go somewhere that you don't enjoy. So it's not about like how far you go. Okay, the metaphor episode. <laughs> okay, another big mistake that comes up is not researching things beforehand. So hey, a this lot works with too. Oh, God. <laughs> Stop. Hey, research. If you're going on a trip, I recommend doing a little research. You're only going to have a better time. That's not true because sometimes you can have a spontaneous trip and not do any research and end up having a great time. Yeah, but, but it might is... not be safe. <laughs> okay. So that is not true with kink. With some of the tamer stuff, okay, sure. Maybe you can do a couple of little things without having to research stuff. But in general, we think it's a good idea to just like listen to this episode or read another article. So a really good example that comes up with this is around choking. So most people would think of choking as like, oh, that's kind of a straightforward thing. I just wrap my hand around my partner's throat and I give them a little pressure, right? But there are actually a lot of techniques behind choking. So when you're choking somebody, you want to put pressure only on the sides of their throat, never on the front of their oh, throat. Like, like I'm, the I'm doing type. it to myself right now. I'm like choking myself as we record. But if you put pressure on the front of your throat, like it causes pain, it cuts off your breathing. Like there are a lot of issues that can come up versus you can actually put a pretty decent amount of pressure on the sides of your neck without causing any sort of pain. So it's something small like that. Like you wouldn't think about the exact location of like how to choke and where should I put my fingers. But, mm. you know, if you just look up an article or read a book, like any experienced kinkster is going to give you these kinds of tips. So that's why we're saying do a little bit of research beforehand. Don't just jump into another thing that comes up is like using a toy. If there's a certain toy you're using, you read the instructions. You got to figure out how it works. Okay, another common mistake is not talking about the specifics beforehand. So this is something that I saw a lot of in my private practice when Fifty Shades of Grey came out. Oh, is boy, a lot yeah. of a lot of couples had to come in for sessions afterwards because one partner, it was usually male female partnerships and the woman had told the man like I want you to like be kinky like Christian Grey. Oh yeah, like like she read the book, saw the movie and was like, "Oh my god, that's so hot. Mm -hmm. Let's do it all tonight." Yeah, or or just yeah, said something vague like that, like I want you to be kinky or like boss me around or whatever it is. And the guy did stuff that made her totally uncomfortable and she didn't want to do. But it was because they hadn't talked in detail beforehand about what exactly do you mean? What's on the table? What's off the table? So there were so many couples who had sex that ended up feeling, you know, at the best, it felt awkward. At worst, it felt violating. So it's really important for you to talk beforehand about like, what does kinky mean to you? What specific kinky things do you want to experiment with? What is on the table? What's off the table? It's really important to be clear with each other about that. Also, this would be like going to a travel agent and be like, oh, I want to go to Fiji really bad. 
plan me a trip and you don't talk about price, you don't talk about preferences. And all of a sudden, like this travel agent comes back and goes, all right, cool. I booked you a hundred thousand dollar trip to Fiji, like payments due tomorrow. And you're like, oh, no. (laughs) All right. The next mistake I think we've already kind of alluded to is like doing too much too fast. So we really want to encourage you, especially if you're a beginner, because that's really who this episode is geared towards. Go slow. Take little baby steps. Do not feel like you need to be jumping right into the Fifty Shades of Grey scenes immediately. Yeah, don't try to go to like 10 museums in one day. Oh my God, it's really gonna keep going. Okay, let's see you do this one. Not having a way out. So that is a safe word. Yeah, you gotta have a round trip ticket, baby. (laughs) Gotta be able to get home. No, I don't think that works. A safe word is some. Uh, you, you always have to have a round trip ticket for a trip. Make sure, but make sure your cell phone. Like, make sure your cell phone works in case you get into a bad situation. Do you have service in this country that you're in? Oh lord. Okay, so a safe word is a word that you and your partner agree on beforehand. It's a word that you are not going to say during sex. So you want it to be something very random. So something like stop is a terrible safe word because you might be, you know, kind of role playing somebody being more bossy and someone's like, oh, stop, stop. And then your partner's like, wait, is that a sexy stop or is that the the stop word stop? So a word that you wouldn't normally use, something very random like leaf or purple or penguin, something like that. And when somebody says the safe word, that means everything stops immediately. It's just a complete way to like press the pause button, be able to back out of everything. It could be like, literally, I just need a pause. I need a couple of breaths. Or it could be like, I need this to be done tonight. Even if you're playing with something that feels pretty tame, if you are a beginner and are new to this, we definitely recommend agreeing on a safe word beforehand so you have like a guaranteed way out of it if anything happens to go wrong. Just better safe than sorry. And then final mistake that a lot of people make is not communicating when experimenting. So this is kind of a general mistake a lot of us make around sex. Like we feel like we shouldn't have to talk about it. It should just unfold naturally and spontaneously. Hopefully we don't have to bust this one down for you too much if you've been listening to the podcast, seeing as we are huge proponents of sexual communication. Hopefully by now it is very clear to you why it is important to communicate. Yes. So let us tell you a little bit more about Green Chef. So Xander and I are really adamant that we are not going to recommend anything on the podcast or accept any sponsors unless we have tried it and loved it. So we ordered a week worth of meals from Green Chef, and we actually messed up. And we, we ordered them the wrong... You did. I won't drag you too much, but Xander messed up the date. <laughs> I ordered them the wrong date, and uh, it was a date that we were spending a weekend away with uh, some of our coworkers. So instead of cooking at home for just Vanessa and me, we actually made a whole little tasting menu for our team. Yeah, so we brought them on the road with us and we cooked all of the meals. We all tried all of them and we had a pretty wide variety of eaters there. Like Xander and I are definitely big foodies. We had some people who describe themselves as picky eaters, but everybody loved every meal. And we had a wide variety of things. We had these like beef sliders with feta. There was a pork with a truffle sauce and a really good chicken with cashews and veggies. I think that one was the overall winner. But everybody loved the food. So we were really excited to be able to recommend them to you. And they've put together a really great offer for our Pillow Talks listeners. So you can go to greenchef.com slash pillow130 and use the code pillow130 to get $130 off. They offer tons of different recipes every week. So you got plenty to choose from. You're never going to get bored. You're going to be able to please all the various <laughs> potentially picky members of your family <laughs> with their options. And also, you know, I can speak from my experience as the, the main chef in our household. It was super easy to prep everything. Um, they Some of the things were pre-prepped. Some of the things were just a quick chop. It was uh, very quick and very easy and super tasty. Yeah. So Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. Well, and you can go to greenchef.com slash pillow130. Make sure to use the code pillow130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. All right, so let's get into it and let's talk about some specific kinky things to do in the bedroom together, some ways to experiment with bringing a little bit more kink in. It's not full on Fifty Shades of Grey just yet. Yeah, nothing should be full on Fifty Shades of Grey. Even when you become more experienced, it's just, 
not a good role model, but we wanted to give you specific ideas. And again, these are geared more towards the beginner. Somebody who's really describing themselves as like, I've got a pretty vanilla sex life. Mm -hmm. I've never tried any of this. Like, what are some baby steps that I can take to experiment with kink and see if it's something I like and want to do more of? A great starting place is spanking. Whoops. <laughs> so, uh, best place for spanking tends to be the butt cheeks because they tend to have a good amount of fat in them, a little bit of jiggle, and they don't <laughs> hurt uh, too much to spank. So you want to avoid spanking like bony places or places where your skin is pretty thin. Oh, so kind of like my butt. You're, I wasn't going to drag you in this episode, but... I have a bony butt. I have a bony butt, and I don't think that's ever going to change yeah. in this lifetime. So yeah. um, Xander doesn't really I'm gonna have, own it. You don't really have cheeks. I'm going to own it. But I don't think you would enjoy me spanking you anyways. So, you know, it's okay. It works out in the end. <laughs> but you can explore with the butt cheeks if you've got a little cheek behind there. Um, so you can have your partner lightly spank you during sex. This can be fun in more animalistic positions like doggy style. And if you're feeling at all nervous about like, I don't know how much pressure to use, how hard can I spank, like try it outside of sex and try it when you have clothes on first. A lot of times people are surprised by how much force they can use when they're doing a little bit of spanking. So it can be fun to like experiment with it outside of the bedroom first, get a sense of the pressure that you like, and then you can bring it into the bedroom. Yeah, I mean, that. having had you never spank me during sex or, <laughs> or ever, I think, I would I mean, imagine. I spank you like as a joke. Yeah. Like for fun. Yeah, but not hard. <laughs> uh, only when I'm a bad boy. <laughs> But no, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, I think if you're if you're in the middle of sex, I would imagine that your pain tolerance is probably a bit higher because, mm -hmm. you know, you got those feel good chemicals rushing through you. Mm -hmm. You're not really attuned to like pain necessarily. You're focused more on the pleasure. Mm -hmm. Another one is hair pulling. This is, I think, very similar to spanking and kind mm -hmm. of like a good intro to kink. Um, yeah, a lot of people with longer hair like having their hair pulled. So we'll give a quick little technique tip for hair pulling. I keep like enacting them all to myself. I don't know what it is about me, but like I have to do it in order to explain all it. All right, to well, people. do it. Do it, babe. Okay. So what She's you want to do it. for you <laughs> when you're pulling the hair is wrap the person's hair up in a ponytail and you can give the whole ponytail a tug. When you try to pull like small bits of the hair, yeah, that don't can do be that. super painful. Well, yeah. Have you, you ever can... tried to pull one, like pull yeah. gray hair out or something? It hurts. <laughs> yeah. So you want to get all the hair wrapped up together and you can just like wrap your whole wrist around that and give it a gentle tug. Yeah. The more you grab, it's there's less force on each hair follicle. Yeah. So it's more of just a general pulling rather than a, like, oh my God, my hair might actually literally get... Mm -hmm pulled out. Another way to, to do it that I might recommend is if you're really starting out is like just run your fingers through your partner's hair if, if the partner has longer hair. Run mm -hmm. your fingers through their hair because that in and of itself is going to feel good. And then as you're running your fingers through your hair, you can kind of grab bigger chunks of hair and give a small tug while you're running your fingers through. That can be a good way to just start out of like, oh, what does it feel like to apply a little bit of pressure when you're doing something that already is feeling kind of good? Yeah, if you're going to do that, I would say exert the pressure at the scalp. So yeah. you kind of want to put your fingers in up through their hair and then curl your fingers into like a fist. So you're pulling on the hair but it's very close to the scalp, so you're yeah. not like actually tugging it out of the scalp. So this is another one where you can exper experiment. Wow, I just came up with a new word. I was going for explore and experiment. Experiment. I love it, actually. Experiment. <laughs> so you may want to try this one out outside of the bedroom first so you get a sense of, again, how much pressure can you use and, and what is your particular partner like? Some people like more pressure, some people like less. All right, another way to experiment with kink is through dirty talk. So you don't have to change any of your actual behaviors in the bedroom. You could literally just start incorporating dirty talk about, you know, it could be about doing different things or it could be using words you don't normally use, calling each other names you don't normally do. But again, like not having to do anything different physically, but still have sex feel very kinky. So this is a great thing for beginners and total newbies, people who are feeling nervous about trying different activities. Like dirty talk can be such a great starting point. Yeah, I mean, you can talk about the thing that you are interested in trying and that can be a great way to just 
kind of do like a dress rehearsal, so mm-hmm. to speak, um, you know, without actually having to do the thing and just like, oh, how does it feel to talk through it? If that's still feeling exciting, that's a good indication that it's worth a try in real life. But if you're exactly. finding it like, oh, when, once I actually start saying this out loud, it doesn't really sound so hot anymore. Mm-hmm. That might be an indication of, oh, okay, then maybe I don't want to do that. Yeah. And we do have a really amazing dirty talk guide if this is something that you want to explore or you feel like I'm just not very good at talking dirty. It has hundreds of examples. It has really fun worksheets for exploring the words that you guys like like to use in the bedroom, the words that turn you on. So we will link to that in our show notes. Next up, we have role playing. So this is when you are playing different roles. You're being different characters in the bedroom. So role playing, just like kink in and of itself, can really range from very basic to very elaborate. But if you're a beginner to it, you definitely don't have to make up an elaborate scene with like this whole backstory and character arcs and costumes and props and all of that kind of stuff. Like you can really keep it simple, even if it's something where you're not even playing a full character but you're just doing something a little out of the norm. Like maybe you wear stiletto heels to the bedroom or you bust out that like super revealing lingerie set that you haven't worn in 10 years. Yeah, and this can overlap with dirty talk a bit, you know, where it could just be like, oh, have I been a bad girl or something (laughs) like that? And it's like taking on that personality of like, I'm behaving in a way that's slightly out of the ordinary for myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, bringing that verbally and physically into the bedroom. Mm Mm-hmm. We actually have a totally free role play guide. We put together 10 ideas for how to role play, and these were crowd favorites from our Instagram audience, so we will put a link to that in the show notes. All right, and our final two ideas both involve the use of some props, but these can, again, be like nice beginner steps. And these can be very cheap and easy props. Don't mm-hmm. They do not need to be expensive. Probably shouldn't be yeah. <laughs> overly expensive. <laughs> okay, so the first one is blindfolding each other. So blindfolding can be really fun because not being able to see just naturally heightens your other senses. Yeah, so- you might be surprised. If you've never done this, mm-hmm. you'll be surprised at what it is like all of a sudden not being able to see, not knowing what is coming, it really can heighten the sensation. Yeah, it's just this kind of anticipation of what's coming next, this, yeah, this deprivation of not having your sight available to you. And even for something like as tame as kissing, it can feel really, really sexy. So if you want to go... If you want to go super low budge and you don't want to have to buy a prop, you can just close your eyes. (laughs) You can. It doesn't quite give you the same effect of knowing that you actually can't see even if you wanted to. Yeah, I would would recommend not doing that, I think, because I think that there's an element to the blindfolding where it's like you do open your eyes under the blindfold and you're like, oh, shit, I can't. I can't. I can't see. Like, I want to know what's coming, but I can't. So you don't even have to buy anything special for this. You could use like a sleep mask if you have one. If you have a scarf, like you can use that to tie around your head. You know, get creative with it. That could be part of the fun. But just the simple act of like having this blindfold over your face can make sex feel so much more intense. And you can kind of play around with like the power dynamic element Mm -hmm. of it too. Like the person who's not blindfolded can really play with the person who is being blindfolded. Yeah, this is a great one for some uh, solid pre-communication, just Mm -hmm. talking about what types of activities are on and off the table while you are blindfolded. Absolutely. And maybe set a plan for when you remove the blindfold. Like, oh, are we going to go the whole time with the blindfold on? Are we going to just kind of going to be during foreplay? And then once we start intercourse or something like that, we'll remove the blindfold just so that you know what's going to happen. Unless you want to be fully, literally in the dark about what's going to (laughs) happen. Wow, cheesy. (laughs) How do you tie that one back to travel metaphor? Uh, but we're not talking about what not to do anymore. We're talking about what to do. Yeah, this would be like the surprise vacation where like I book a trip. You don't know where we're going. And you show up at the airport and you're like, oh, my God, where are we going? What's it going to be? I loved that. <laughs> and there you go. Kind of like blindfolding. <laughs> All right, and finally, we have using restraints. So this is where you're putting something around your wrists or your ankles, and like one person is being physically restrained from moving. So if you do want to buy something, we recommend 
They, you can buy like Velcro cuffs. So the fabric itself is really soft. It's not like a handcuff. Don't buy handcuffs. Yeah, I was please. gonna say don't. I feel like yeah. a lot of people do that, especially because they'll often have really cheap handcuffs mm -hmm. in the in those really kind of dumb like bachelor bachelorette yeah. party kits or, or like whatever. The, the little pink feather covered oh, ones. Yeah, like yeah, don't no, buy those. But like actual police handcuffs are not meant to be comfortable. In fact, they are meant to hurt you. <laughs> yes. So instead, yeah, you can find these ones that are like a soft fabric and they have Velcro on them. So they're also easy to take off. If anything happens to go wrong and you really want to get out in that moment, you can take them off yourself versus like some heavy duty handcuffs where like there's a key and who knows where it is. Oh my God, the dog ate it. <laughs> so, but go for gentle ones. If you don't want to buy anything, what you can do is you can experiment with having your partner hold your hands over your head so they can kind of hold them down with one hand. This, it's kind of similar to the like just closing your eyes instead of having a blindfold. Like you're not going to feel super restrained and it does depend on your partner's strength and the position that they're in. Oh, yeah, yada, it also yada, yeah, like, it limits the activities that your partner can perform yeah. on you because they have to be in a certain <laughs> position to hold your hands there. Well, if you want to really do the closing your eyes things, you'll be like, well, you could just put your hands under your back and <laughs> keep them there. But I think that would kind of cheapen the experience. Yeah, it's not going to feel quite as sexy. But if you don't want to buy... I mean, the the little Velcro cuffs that we mentioned, I think you could probably find that for 30, 40 bucks or something. So they're not oh, wildly you're... expensive, but if you really don't want to have to buy something, you can use like silk scarves or silk neckties, but make sure that you go onto YouTube and you look at a tutorial about how to tie like, easy release knots. Like you can't just do a standard double knot on that because you're gonna start to tug on it and it's gonna get tighter and you are probably gonna have to cut your beautiful silk scarf straight off of your wrist. So look up how to do easy to remove knots. Yeah, definitely. Or yeah, you could probably get crafty with this. Some Velcro, some Sure, if we Something, got some DIYers yeah, out you got, there, yeah. you know, yeah, I find yourself some like, little fabric strips, put some hot yeah. glue gun, some Velcro on yeah, them. Yeah, great sexy DIY <laughs> opportunity. Very Instagrammable. Hey, what? that actually, that you know what? This oh should be God. like our big call to action from this episode. Hey, DIY, wow. DIY some restraints, post it on Instagram, tag us. Please. Oh my god. With like rhinestones on them, some little puff paints. Yeah, bling it out. <laughs> God, I love it. Okay, so you can tie the other end of this restraint to like your bed frame. If you have one of those like slatted bed frames or like a metal bed frame, you can do it to that. If you do want to invest in some sort of um, like actual restraints, you can get an under the bed kit where it goes under your mattress because not everybody has a bed frame that they can attach something yeah. to. So the under the bed kits can work really well or DIY it yourself. Just make some extra long strips that can fit under the bed and come up around it. I feel like we're going to get at least one person that is inspired and I'm looking forward to seeing the results. We'll send you something special if you do. Yeah. <laughs> there'll, there'll be a special prize for this podcast episode. But the reason that restraints can be really sexy is like just having your movements restricted, not being able to move your hands or move your feet. Like it can be very hot. It can feel very kinky. And you can, can you could combine with this with the blindfolding mm -hmm. as well. Because then it's, you know, it's like taking away more senses. I guess yeah. you're, you're <laughs> being restrained you're is touched. necessarily taking away a sense because you can still feel things touching you, but it's like taking you away your, your, yeah, your ability to mm -hmm. your agency, so to speak. Like yeah. you can't really do anything. You can't move. Yeah. So I would recommend exploring one or the other first with like blindfolds or restraints, but they can be combined later. And then with restraints, I would also recommend just doing your hands first. And then if you like that, you can do hands and feet at the same time, but generally hands are like a, a good starting place. All right, so let's say you experimented with a little kink, you tried a few things out. So let's talk about aftercare. So aftercare is absolutely crucial for truly kinky sex. And I think this is yet another thing that true kinksters like do so well. I think most people who would describe themselves as like only ever having vanilla sex have never even heard the word aftercare. 
but it can be a truly incredible addition to any person's sex life. So aftercare is basically the things that we do after having sex to ensure that we're feeling safe and connected and just good about the experience that happened. It can also be like a really emotional intimacy building activity too. So for those of you, mm-hmm. if you're not even doing kink, you could even take some of these aftercare ideas, especially like to the guys out there. If you're like, oh, she keeps saying she wants more emotional intimacy and I don't know what that mm-hmm. means. Mm -hmm. here is a very concrete, actionable way to start building some of that without really having to do anything that feels that out of the ordinary for you. So kinky sex like can be physically or emotionally draining. And so aftercare just kind of ensures that you're emotional and physical needs are met by each other. And a lot of people who have kink as a pretty prominent part of their sex life have like elaborate rituals or routines around aftercare. So we're going to give you some examples of things that you can do. This list may be a little bit of an overkill for somebody who's, you know, just dipping their toes into kink. But like we were saying, like in general, we think the idea of aftercare is a really great thing that anybody can incorporate into their sex life. Yeah, just think about which of these sound good to you, mm-hmm. might feel good to you, and whether you're engaging in kink or not, think about do you want to incorporate any of these into your sex life? Okay, so on a purely physical front, I mean, aftercare could literally be like gently removing blindfolds or restraints, like getting you out of whatever contorted position that you were in. So there might be like literal physical things to to kind of bring the scene to a close. But it could be like getting something to eat or drink, even just having a little bit of water, but like post-sex snack sounds great. It could be getting something warm and cozy to snuggle up in, um, soft kisses or caresses, maybe even a gentle massage or a bath or shower, like those things can all just physically kind of help bring you back down to earth and feel safe and connected again. And then on an emotional level, you and your partner can discuss how you both felt during that, you know, little experiment with kink that you did together. It may also help to like remind yourselves that nothing about kink is weird or abnormal. Sometimes people like go out of their comfort zones and try something different and then they enjoy it. But like afterwards, there's kind of a rush of shame that can come in like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that and I liked it, you know? So it might help to just have that reminder to each other of like, that was great that we allowed ourselves to experiment and explore and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, like if you are doing something kinky to your partner, this could be a great thing to keep in mind afterwards that like while your partner may have really enjoyed it, they might have some feelings that come up where they're feeling a little judgmental towards themselves or a little ashamed. So it very immediately, it could be super helpful for you to be like, hey, that was super hot. I really enjoy like. I really enjoyed seeing you enjoying that. I, you know, would love to do that with you again. Those mm-hmm. kinds of things that can help put them at some ease that, oh yeah, there's nothing, nothing abnormal about what yeah. we just did, nothing wrong with what we just did. And I and my partner who did it to me enjoyed doing it. Yeah. And you may also even want to revisit this a couple of days later. Like let's say you tried something that really was out of your comfort zone, like it felt like a pretty big step for you. So it can be nice to discuss things, you know, right after you've just had them, but also to give yourself a few days to kind of like process it, think it through, see if any other reactions come up and then have a conversation later and just say like, hey, let's talk about that. Do we want to do that again? Do we want to like make any sort of adjustments to it? That kind of stuff. But aftercare can be such a great way to connect with each other and continue these experiments with kink. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's do a couple listener questions. Okay. All right. So first question is, what if my partner prefers kink, but I'm not always okay with it or don't know if I'm okay with it? Okay, first of all, I want to normalize that in most relationships, you're going to have different levels of interest in kink. You're just different people. It's totally normal. So I think a lot of people can get themselves a little bit worked up about that. Like, I'm vanilla and my partner's kink. What do we do? Like, that's the case for so many couples, right? So I guess what my attention gets drawn to next is the like, I'm not always okay with it or don't know if I'm okay with it. So you absolutely get to have your own boundaries around sex. If there's something that feels like, yeah, I'm not okay with that, it's out of my comfort zone, it's against my boundaries, like that is your prerogative and you get to share that with your partner and your partner needs to respect that. And so your partner may have their own feelings around that, like I'm really bummed that my partner doesn't want to explore this with me. They're allowed to have those feelings, but obviously not pressure you to change your mind about it. Yeah, and on the flip side, I think if you are not, 
not feeling okay with something, I think it's equally important to not shame your partner Mm -hmm. for the thing that they want or make them feel like, oh, you shouldn't want that. You should be okay with just the sex that we've been having or just vanilla sex because that's, you know, that's equally, (laughs) equally problematic. Yeah. The second part of it was if I don't know if I'm okay with it. So there are a bunch of things that you could do here. Like one is to get a better sense of your own feelings that are coming up. If you're not sure how you're feeling, like take a little bit of time to feel into like, what are the reactions I'm having? Where are they coming from? What do I want to do about this? And then another thing that you could do is explore baby steps with your partner. So if your partner's telling you, you know, I want to have this whole sex dungeon set up, like that might feel overwhelming to you. And you're like, I don't, I don't know if I want to have that. But maybe if you take the time to like, okay, well, what if it was at first we just bought a few toys or at first we played with, around with restraints, like break it down into the baby steps and see if there are any possibilities for you to be more flexible there. Oh, yeah. And I mean, just because you try something once or dip your toes in, it does not mean you have to keep going. Like, you know, we've been talking about this before. You know, it's like if your partner does something to you, you are, you know, you should talk about it afterwards. And like, how did that feel? Like, oh, yeah, like that was great. I'd love to do it again. Or, you know, maybe I didn't love that so much. Let's not do that again. If you are doing something to your partner, you equally get to have that conversation about Mm -hmm. how did it feel for you just engaging in that with your partner it's like i think Mm -hmm. a lot of people get it in their heads that oh well if i say yes then i'm like giving a perpetual yes or it's like a slippery slope type Mm -hmm. thing of okay well i started and now i can't stop or we can never go back and that is not true you you both of you get agency and get a a say and get desires and um, preferences and boundaries All right, next question is, how do I not feel shame around my kink? Okay, so let's just first start off by saying that there is nothing shameful about any of your sexual interests or desires. Like, you know, Xander and I have said this before, that our belief is that as long as it's between enthusiastically consenting adults, anything and everything goes. So please don't judge yourself for, you know, the curiosities that you happen to have. But that being said, like, We did talk a lot about all these misconceptions that people have about kink and that we're defining it as like these unusual or abnormal activities. So it makes perfect sense to feel shame because there is like a kind of global shame that gets put onto kinky activities. Or there's just this general desire of, oh, I wish I was more normal. mm -hmm. I, I just wish that I was like other people. Yeah. And then, of course, I'll say, you know, if there's some, like, big feelings coming up around you, a deep story around it, like, of course, therapy can be beneficial in helping you kind of unpack those feelings. Because shame's a tricky one. Like, it's it's easy for us to sit here and say, like, don't be ashamed. It's normal and common and it's okay. But the likelihood that us just saying that one sentence is really going to penetrate you and just completely obliterate the shame, like it's it's pretty unlikely. So, you know, for a lot of us, like we need to do therapy and to have this like safe place to process our thoughts and experiences in order to dissolve that shame. All right. Final question. I feel like this is an experience a lot of people can relate (laughs) with. Early in my relationship, I suggested toys. It was a no. Seven years later, and I'm too scared to ask again. Okay, so first let's give this person some acknowledgement and applause for being brave and making a suggestion of their partner. And it sucks to hear a no from your partner, right? Like it's it's really tough to be vulnerable and to get turned down by your partner. That being said, like it was seven years ago and it's just so important for couples to be able to communicate openly and consistently about their sex lives in relationships. So, so much can happen in seven years and your partner, you know, might have completely changed their ideas or attitudes or beliefs about toys. Who knows, your partner may even be sitting there thinking like, I want to play with toys, but I said no, and now I can't like go back and change my mind. So I would bring this up again. And honestly, I wouldn't even reference the past conversation. It was so long ago. I'm kind of curious to know if people want us to do an episode about how to suggest something new to your partner. Like that could be an episode in and of itself. So come over to Instagram, Vanessa Marin Therapy, and DM us and let us know if that's something that you'd be interested in. But I would just suggest 
it again. And what I would do, we'll give you like a little quick sneak peek at this potential new episode. What I would do is just tell your partner why it's something that you want to explore with them. So sometimes we get so nervous about suggesting something that we say it in these kind of weird and awkward ways, but instead you want to focus on like, why does it feel sexy to you? Why is your partner the one that you want to do it with? What benefit do you think it would have? But give this conversation a go again. I think that you might be surprised. Yeah, I think trying to bring up why it would be fun together is huge because very often when we don't give that context, it can be easy for the partner on the receiving end of that request of incorporating toys to feel like, oh, they want to use whatever that toy is because I'm not providing enough of whatever on my own Mm -hmm. and uh so yeah in in that other context of hey this would be so fun for us to do together then it's like oh this is something we're doing together it's not like i need to bring a third thing into in between us Mm -hmm. because you're not enough so we're going to put a couple of things in the show notes for you. We will, I guess, put a, uh, a little screenshot of our emoji. Yeah, <laughs> Strong we have emoji to know. game from the review. We'll put our dirty talk guide and our top 10 ideas for who to role play. Well, that's all for today's episode of Pillow Talks. Thank you so much for listening. Join us again next week when we answer all your questions about us in a special Ask Us Anything episode.